So we got two kinds of splines in Vasari and Revit. We've got this guy, spline, and we've got this guy, spline through points. Really different behavior, and a lot of people get puzzled by it, and they want to find something that's a happy medium between the two different things. Um, big thing about spline through points is that it goes directly through the points that you point out to it, and the spline goes a smooth curve that goes through the trajectory traced by those points, but not directly hitting them. You can see this when you go, you take your spline tool and you go bing, 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 bing. You get sort of a control polygon, very different than when you take the spline by points. You go bing, 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 and it passes right through them. Now the problem comes when people want to host things. So say you've got this little rig over here that uh, you want to go and put your spline against, but you don't want it to actually pass through these points, you just want that to be sort of a controller for it. So I'm going to take my spline, which is going to make the right geometry when I draw it. So we can see this by taking our spline and drawing it out like this. One, two, three, four. And everybody looks like they're nicely positioned in relationship to these points, but if you go and you grab this guy and move it out, well, well, sad trombone, it's not actually hosted with that thing. And if you do want to get something that is hosted with it, you use the spline by points, you go one, two, and it looks like you're doing the same interaction, but you're going to get a very different kind of geometry. So the issue here is what if you want to get this kind of geometry, but you want it to be associated with this guy? Because you can see now this guy is actually associated with those with that sort of rig geometry. Well, what we need to do is we need to take a look at a little bit about how a control polygon spline is put together. And there are other sort of technical names for these things, but I always forget what they are. I'm going to show you that I can actually make one of these with an adaptive component, something that gets pretty damn close to doing what the um, regular spline does, but it has point hosting behavior. And just to do a sort of a quick and dirty illustration of it, here I've got it clicking my three points, and it's not exactly the same thing. It does something pretty similar, and for many people that will be enough. And I can show you how to get this behavior. Um, but first we need to sort of analyze what it is that a B-spline does in this sort of four-point situation. It's kind of different when you do three or six or whatever, but you can just sort of see how you can start making your own tools to do what you need. So I'm going to actually draw the control polygon Oh, I need to turn on 3D snapping to get this to work. Yeah, reference uh, 3D snapping. And I'm going to go snap, 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 snap. And you can see that's sort of our control polygon for this guy. And I'm going to do a couple more lines. I'm going to go snap to the midpoint to make another sort of triangular shape here. Snap to the midpoint of these three lines like that. And then I'm going to do one more again from the midpoint. So midpoint to, where's my other midpoint? There. And we're going to see one interesting relationship come out of this. And that is that we've got this line, this uh, spline always intersects with the midpoint of this line if you trace that out. And it also creates tangent relationships here and here with a control polygon. So if I can recreate that set of relationships, I can get something that does a lot of the similar kind of aesthetic behavior, at least, that you want with the regular spline. And that's exactly what this little family does. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to open up this guy just to sort of show you how it's put together. Uh, edit. And then we're going to recreate it from scratch just to sort of show you what you can get out of this sort of geometry. So you can see that control polygon that I made before is here. And what I've done is I've made my control polygon with an adaptive component. And then I've drawn a uh, spline by points that uses this as a control rig, actually. So I've sort of reverse engineered my other spline. And I'm just going to make this from scratch just to sort of show you how this goes together. I'm just going to delete that. So if I go up here to my reference lines, and I'm in my 3D snapping, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, like so. And then I'm going to make the rest of my control rig. I'm going to go one, two, snapping to the midpoints, and three. And then finally my midpoint to midpoint guy over here. 
So I've got my control rig. Now I can go in and I can get my spline by points. And I can do the same thing that I want this thing to do. I have my starting point, and this is the fudge here. This is sort of the sort of near near tangent factor. I'm going to do a point that is very close. In fact, I'm going to put it out here and then I'm going to move it closer later on. So I'm going to go point to create my tangency. I'm going to go over here to create my midpoint connection. Then over here I'm going to go back again, something that's close to it, and point. So what have we got? We've got something that's starting to look pretty B-spliny. So I'm going to take this and you can see I zoom in, this is not tangent right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that point, I'm going to move it way in close. You can see right now it's 0.08% uh, along this line. I'm going to move it way in. I'm going to get like, let's call it 0.01. So that's not at zero, but it's pretty close. And you can see that the tangency gets pretty damn close. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this other edge. I'm going to go and I'm going to select this point, and um, because it's on the, the near end of this line, because I drew it uh, clockwise, I've got it at 0.0895. Um, I'm actually just going to make it the same as my other one. So right now it's measuring from the beginning of that line, which is right over here. I want to measure from the end. So now we can see that it's measuring in a slightly different way. So now I can just call this the same thing, 001. So now I've got that thing that is really very near to being tangent. So now I've got my line that's acting very much like a B-spline. And I'm going to do one other sort of nicety for this, just to make it that um, my, my line behaves a little bit more like a line. I'm going to take all those reference lines, and I'm going to make them not a reference, which means that I won't snap to them when I'm in the loaded project, right? And, oh, and I haven't made these guys adaptive points. One, two, three, four. Oh, shoot, you know what? <laughs> i got to make sure that I get just the right points there. That guy's going to be an adaptive point, not the one that's near it. And same over here. I should have done this at the outset. Then I wouldn't have had to zoom all the way in. Adaptive point. And I've got this guy too. And this guy over here. And so I've got one, two, three, four. Another little trick that a lot of people don't know about is that you can select your points and you can call them different placement points. I'm going to make that my three. I'm going to make this my two. You know, if I was smarter about constructing this, it would have been a little bit easier. But one, two, three, four. So now I've got my family. I can load it into my project. I already had one there, so I'm going to overwrite it with my new guy. And it should be over here in my browser. Family 1. So I can take Family 1. And I only have to do this once. Like, once you do this, now you've got this tool. You've got a four-point hosted family. So I can go in. I can go one or actually you don't even have to do it once. You can just download it from the blog and then you'll have it and you can use it for whatever. Uh, there. So now I've got my B-spline-like behavior happening on this line. It's making its near tangency relationship here, near tangency relationship here. And if I move this guy, I can see that everybody's going to flex and move with it. Everybody's going to create nice parametric relationships with each other, unlike this point, which will not flex because it is a regular spline. So I'm going to get rid of this guy just to sort of not have it mucking up my field here. And I'm going to show you just a couple things that you can do with this line. Um, I mean, you can pretty much treat it like a line as you would anywhere else. Um, I've got it here. I can, uh, I'm hitting down control, so I can control drag it. I can make copies of this guy. Um, I can also use it to do form element creation. Uh, I have to be a little bit careful about it because if I select this whole thing and I do create form, it's not going to work because when I select the whole thing, it's actually using all of my construction lines as well in trying to create a form element, not just the line that you see. So if I hit tab, I'm going to select the line. I'm going to tab into the line. 
and a tab into the line. And now I can do create form. So now I can have um, a very nicely parametrically driven surface that still, you know, goes along with my control rig. And, uh, you know, I can, I can add more of these guys if I want. And I can create my surface. I can select my surface and tab into this line like that just to extend my surface further like that. Uh, and, you know, because it's a loaded family, you can go in and, you know, grab this guy and maybe like do a sweep along it and load it back in and then you'll have piping along this form. Anyway, this is just a way to sort of show that uh, you don't have to sit around and wait for the factory to come up with a spline by points that has this behavior. You, know, you don't have to wait for the software development company to do it. You can make your own tools with this stuff. Uh, you know, it would be nice if certainly if we had a spline by point that worked like this, uh, but we don't. And, you know, we can sit around and whine about it, um, which, which I do actually quite a bit. Um, but you guys can get on with your work and, you know, make something that'll actually get your job done. So I hope that, that was helpful and you might have uh, something to do with this uh, family. And if you want it, you can download it from the site or you can just build your own so you know what it does. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that works for you.